Hello everyone, welcome back to another video looking at Power BI. So if you've watched a previous video that was looking at conditional formatting, then my screen is going to look very boringly much like it did in that last video. Uh, I simply finished, just finished filming that video, came up with another idea and I thought the data set I've got here is more than adequate to give you that demonstration on how to use uh, this particular topic. The topic in question is going to be using data bars. So data bars allow us to add a graphical representation of the values that we have in a table. So for us, you can see in our sales, what we're going to be looking at today, we've got numbers ranging all the way from 400 all the way up until 1600. And by adding data bars, we're able to do a visual bar within this cell that just gives a bit extra, well, just it looks nicer maybe than just showing these raw values and just adds a bit more sort of contrast to the table overall rather than being all boring numbers. So in order to do that, and like I say, I want to jump straight into the video, all we need to do is just navigate to our sales or your other desired field you want to add this to. Click drop down, come down to conditional formatting, what can sometimes be confusing. And this time we're going to go down to data bars. So the middle option we have available to us. And there's not a great deal of options available uh, when it comes to customizing this, but simply all we're going to do is not touch anything, select OK and just see what we get as a basic standard. So you can see what it's done is added this bar into our cell and we've got the values still retained in there as well. And where it works well is there's an easy visual um, without having to look at every single number. You can clearly see obviously what the minimum and the maximum is. So we can see that the bar at the top here is obviously got is nearly all the way up to the end. And like so with these ones down here for 400, we can see it's a relatively small bar compared to all those other numbers. So we get a great visual without actually having to do much to this at all. One quick fix we could do if we so desired would be to go back into our uh, conditional formatting for that field into data bars. And you can see the first option that we come across is show bar only. So you'll see at the moment we've got the bar and the numbers within that cell. If we click show bar only and then do OK, you can see that the values have now disappeared and we're just left with a bar. So obviously it gives us, um, obviously it just removes that number and just gives us that bar. Obviously, as like I've done here, you can see as you hover over each bar or cell, you're gonna actually get that value. So you, you still have access to that number uh, without obviously having to get it through other means. Um, but this just gives, serves as a nice purpose, again, to summarize your, summarize your sales. And when we're looking at maybe a weak view, you still got the total at the bottom here, and this just gives you a representation to show how that looked over the course of the week. So again, depending on your preference, that's something that you can play around with there as well. As we touched on, well, actually, let's just go into it and we can see that a bit better as well. Go data bars. So at the moment, we haven't done anything other than say we don't want to show, we only want to show the bar. So at the moment, our minimum maximum is derived by going to or picking out the lowest value and the highest value from our column. Obviously, that's going to work best for the number of uh, or most of your circumstances possibly. And what it's doing is you can see that it's the axis for each cell is just going to show based on the minimum and maximum. So you can see that these are all proportionate to one another. If however, you wanted to give it static values, what you could do is go custom on both options. And in here we could say, okay, we want our, our, our minimum value to start out on in terms of our axis at number one, and our top will be 10,000 and then go okay. You can see what it's done is for each cell, it's defined the axis starting at number one and going up all the way to 10,000. And obviously when you do that, all these bars look really small. So this could be a scenario that you might want to do if you had a sales target maybe each day for 10,000 or whatever it might be. And this would then show you as again, a relation to that target where all your values are currently aligning. Alternatively, if you go back into here and maybe if I put a bit more realistic number, so maybe say 5,000, and go okay. It was, it's still not really worked that well. Uh, go into conditional format and bars, and let's say we want these to all be based upon uh, 2000. I don't think I had any that went up that high. Again, we can now see compared to the 2000 number how they all fare in there as well. So this is all just down to personal preference and how you want to play around with the bars. Probably one of the last couple of things just to show you as well before we end the video is you can see at the moment we've all got positive bars, so they're gonna be blue, 
but we can change the color of the bar if we want so here. And if it's a negative bar, so it's gonna be less than zero, again, this is where you can play around with the value here. So you might want to make the bar red if the number is less than obviously zero. And the last one as well, don't need to worry too much about the axis. Well, the axis is just this bar you can see on the line here. So you might want to play around with that as well. But lastly, direction of the bar, if we to change this to right to left, just to show you that as well, you can see all it simply does is moves the bar uh, so that it starts and goes from right to left. So that's another uh, functionality you have to play with if you so desire. So again, another quick and short video. Uh, so I hope you appreciate the sort of conciseness of these videos just to get straight to the content and show you obviously how these tips and tricks can work and be used in your dashboards as well. If you did enjoy that video, please don't forget to like the video. Uh, hitting that like button not only shows me obviously the content you liked and you'd like to see more of, but it helps that all important YouTube algorithm, making sure that more people are able to find the channel and obviously find this video and guidance as well. And lastly, if you haven't already, maybe you're new to the channel or you've seen our videos before please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification button that way you'll be notified of all of our future videos as and when they come out so thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video